Hi, welcome back to another episode of Azure Unblogged. Today, we're going to discuss identity and access management for Azure VMware Solution Center with Javier Elizondo, a senior cloud architect here at Microsoft. So stay tuned. Hey, Javier, thanks for joining. Hi, Amy. How are you doing? Thanks Good. for having me. It's, oh. uh, I'm excited to be here with you and share a little bit more on AVS, how it should yeah. be more solution. Definitely. So yeah, tell me about identity and Azure VMware solution. How does it work? Sure. Um, let me share my screen real quick just to give you a little high level uh, overview. So you and people may that are watching us may be aware or know that uh, we have Azure Landing Zones, and in particular, we have accelerators for different uh, solutions. This that I'm displaying in my screen is the uh, accelerator or Azure Landing Zone, zone for AVS. So uh, uh, some people may be familiar with it, and we have different critical design areas. The one that we are going to discuss today is about identity and access management for AVS, which is one of the areas that some uh, customers or people sometimes forget about, but it's very important to talk and discuss about access controls, uh, RBAC, a least privilege uh, access, and a, which is very important for deployments that people are doing. And more and more customers are embracing this technology. So it mm -hmm. is very important to discuss about this because this is something that people will want to implement uh, almost on day two. Yeah, so this is a landing zone where they can help get you know get them started in their environment. Is that correct? Uh, okay. Azure landing zones and accelerator is a way for uh, uh, for in in this case Microsoft to help customers to get a uh, up to a speed and deploy faster the solution. Great. Okay, Javier. So you mentioned about role based access controlled or RBAC and least privileged access. So what account would I use to log in and do all that fun stuff in AVS? Yeah, so when uh, AVS Private Cloud gets uh, deployed, mm -hmm. there is a special role that gets created. As you are aware, the AVS is a managed VMware service. Mm -hmm. So uh, people will not have the full uh, permissions that they are used to with their on-prem VMware instances. So this uh, uh, VMware instance in, in Azure, it will be uh, limited access. And there is a cloud admin role that gets mm -hmm. created with every private cloud. And this is going to have a, a set of permissions that is going to be a, a slim down permission. So it's very important to know this cloud admin uh, role because there's going to be a cloud admin, a local account cloud admin that is going to be also get uh, it's going to get uh, created with it. Okay. It's this cloud admin uh, account slash role is not really meant for day to day uh, activities like most uh, VMware admins may be familiar with. Uh, and in fact, we do not want people using this cloud admin. In a day to basis, we want that to be like your emergency break uh, glass account. And mm -hmm. we do want uh, to establish a RBAC controls in the area of uh, the Azure portal. Like uh, ABS, ABS is like any other uh, Azure resource. It mm -hmm. has the management control plane and then it has the actual service plane, which is in this case a vSphere environment. Mm -hmm. And we want to protect from the Azure control plane with proper RBAC and other mechanisms that we have, for example, just in time access with privilege, uh, privilege identity management and these other features to protect the uh, uh, access control plane into mm. the private cloud. And then finally establish RBAC permissions to normally like uh, we would do with the vSphere environment. Okay, so that makes yeah, it makes sense. You have your administrator at vSphere local that you log in with all privileges, but um, you don't want to use cloud admin, which is similar to access, let's say, like to use HCX, right? I mean, if something happens and you have to change the password, you're gonna break your connection. So yeah, that's great. a good point. Uh, HCX is another component in the AVS platform, and mm -hmm. for now, AVS it is the administrator that we provide with a NSXT. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a uh, full admin, but mm -hmm. we do uh, 
caught or we make caution on, on the use of this admin, uh, a particular with a, the password, because mm -hmm. in case the password changes, that may break some things uh, related to, you, you know, the HX. In fact, uh, we do not support right now self-service uh, password changes. And the only way to change or rotate the password for the uh, admin in HCX manager is through a support, uh, creating a support ticket, so oh, okay. uh, a support case. So this is something important to note versus uh, the cloud admin account, which is still a break glass account. We do support changing the password uh, via self-service mm -hmm. uh, in the Azure portal, but that, those are the main differentiators. Okay. So um, in a nutshell, try to not use any of these uh, privileged accounts in a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. We have other means. And now what other means are this? It is a, we do have a wrong command feature in ADS. And this wrong command is a, a feature set that it is basically a subset of, of PowerShell commands mm -hmm. that enable certain features. Uh, and enable different features in ABS. But one of those features is the ability to add identity sources for identity, sorry, identity sources in, in vSphere. In oh, okay. this way, we can join or make integration of your Active Directory domain to the vSphere like most of the VMware admins are used to. In that way, when we add the uh, uh, AD domain into vSphere, People can start leveraging that identity for uh, that already used with a on-prem Active Directory. The mm -hmm. same that they would do in their normal vSphere, they can do it in AVS vSphere. In that way, they can use their uh, you know custom roles and they can use different a, a set of roles to different areas of the vSphere hierarchy. Well, that's great. So the run command is kind of like when, like you said, it's PowerShell commands and you're just running it elevated so you can do some items that maybe you normally couldn't do and then you yeah. can add the active directory um, domain that's that's right actually okay. let me uh, do a little quick show until yeah. and i can show you a, the high levels to add a, your external social identity in okay. the vcenter abs so mm -hmm. it is basic five steps uh, having proper connectivity in a resolution uh, we do require a certificate for the in, in if we are going to do LDAP, secure LDAP, uh, we need to upload a certificate to a storage account that the AVS environment is going to access. Uh, and we finally use the a wrong command to add the identity uh, of AD as a source. And lastly, the assignment of roles or permissions. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, customers or you wouldn't wouldn't be able to have permissions to the typical identity sources. So right. you would not be able to do it this way. So instead, um, we want to use a, a run command feature. One of the main gotchas here in requirements is to have proper connectivity because your AVS solution, assuming it's already plumbed, connected to your uh, network, which there was another episode about that. Mm -hmm. uh, now we want to make sure we also have proper connectivity, uh, DNS resolution as well, because right. the AVS domain needs to know what your domain is. In this case, we need to accommodate that via DNS servers in the uh, DNS zone in your AVS cloud so that your uh, AVS solution can know where to query that domain. Okay. After this, uh, we do uh, require uh, the certificate to be exported in a CER format into mm -hmm. a storage account. We do want to create a SAS URL for from that a certificate that is stored in the storage account in okay. the in a blob uh, as a blob, a, a, blob yeah, in a blob, con, blob storage versus regular uh, share folder a, a, like Azure files is has to be in a, a blob storage flavor. Uh, we generate that SAS token and we're gonna use this SAS token in the wrong command feature in AVS. Um, this would be the LDAP uh, S identity source, which is this particular one that we are uh, using here. Mm -hmm. And we would, they input several items. Uh, some of them is like what group name is going to be the one that you want to integrate uh, from on-prem, uh, the SSL uh, URL that we generated previously. 
Mm -hmm. This is the group that has uh, that we will I want to add into um, or, or targeting to our ABS and the credentials that have access to your uh, domain. Some of the Bayesian groups that this is a standard. Some uh, you know uh, VMware admins already are familiar with this process. And finally, how we want to uh, identify this name once it is properly uh, added into the vSphere environment in ABS. Okay. So after that, we just click run. Uh, this is going to be a task that runs a, as a, any other task in Azure portal. It's going to be running there. Um, it succeeds, and luckily, you know, succeeds. I, uh, most people have a little bit of issue here and there. So for oh, sure. that, we um, know that some people may not be lucky enough to get it on the first try. So <laughs> there are some some ways to get you a little bit more information in case you don't have uh, mm -hmm. not can do it in the first attempt. When you click in that task, there is going to be uh, areas where you can diagnose what is going on with uh, that task, particularly for the integration or, or the adding the identity in mm -hmm. uh, ABS. And you can see here at my first attempt, I failed to download the certificate. Uh -huh. And if I click on information, it's telling me a little more uh, additional details on what potentially could be uh, going wrong. Um, now, That's assuming great. that, assuming versus that failed. you're good, <laughs> yeah, versus just failed, right? And you're right. scratching your head. Right. right here. <laughs> so assuming that task completed and, and the uh, uh, identity was actually added, Okay. One main difference that most VMware people in the on-premises environments, they used to add memberships or the um, uh, groups in some area and VM, VMware vSphere administration here. Yeah. yeah. We are here are going to actually do it through the actual hierarch hierarchy in the vSphere environment versus the administration side, which we don't have access to. Okay. And uh, we will want to choose uh, the folder or hierarchy in vSphere where we want to add the permissions. We will click in the permissions um, uh, tab and then finally click the plus button. And here is where we are going to target the, um, the domain that we want to um, a poll from identities. Mm. In this case, is ABS demo that XYZ. That is the one that I named in the previous step when adding the uh, identity as a source. Uh, we want to look for in this case ABS demo admin, which is, it is a user, and finally um, a, assign the role that we want in the vSphere environment, which in this case it will be a virtual machine cons console user. Finally, we click OK, and then that uh, role assignment gets recorded, and that's how we map the identity from on-prem into the vSphere environment. And at this point, uh, people that can use their credentials to access the vSphere environment mm -hmm. and properly, you know, have access depending on the functions of the uh, your functions that you have in the vSphere environment. Right. So if you're part of this Active Directory group, maybe you're a desktop engineer and you have certain access to different VMs or a certain cluster. Right. Okay. So uh, this is a chicken in the air, right? Uh, I was doing it right now as a cloud admin role. Mm -hmm. So that me as a cloud admin role, I'm starting to uh, provision all those permissions. And then I once this is done, then I pretty much leave that role. Yeah. Now with a combination of other features, like I said, with PIM and uh, just-in-time access, it's also probably a suggestion and recommendation that we also have here is to use some of that feature so that I can elevate my permissions in the Azure portal side to be able to enter into the vSphere environment as a cloud admin, perform these duties. Mm -hmm. That probably would be uh, the first week. And after I added all my permissions, pretty much leave the cloud admin alone and then right. go into the vSphere environment not even touch anything in the Azure portal and just consume the VMware service. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Definitely for keeping everything controlled and locked down. And <laughs> right. And lastly, uh, we sometimes have uh, feedback from customers. Oh, hey, I having some uh, or something here is not a uh, making sense. Or hey, would you be able to add something into the uh, guidance that you guys are providing? I just want to take uh, twenty seconds to show you how. So every part on so the- So we're I, back to the landing yeah. zone page, right? Yeah, okay. we're going back to the landing zone page. Thanks okay. for the 
uh, reminder here, this is back to the documentation okay. and the tax uh, section. Uh, if anybody wants to submit feedback to the team that is uh, working on updating this, mm -hmm. uh, there is this little uh, message button here. When you click into it, then you can submit feedback to this page and right. it's just going to authenticate you to the uh, GitHub, which this is uh, where we enter the feedback and then mm -hmm. you can enter here the feedback you have put uh, submit issue and this get recording is going to get assigned to somebody to review that feedback. So this is great. We're receiving a lot of feedback from the uh, customer field and also partners and different, uh, you know, uh, parties that are helping us improve this for you guys. Yeah, that's, that's really great. I love, I love having feedback into a product or if I have an issue too, please help me. <laughs> you know, so right. That's great that we can, share that with people and yeah, just go to the landing page, submit feedback and maybe it'll get incorporated into the product or you'll get a reach out from someone to help you with your issue. Um, yeah, and basically this is it, uh, Amy, it is as uh, gotchas is a uh, use least privilege uh, access, mm -hmm. try to leverage uh, so, uh, areas of uh, features that we have in the portal to protect some of that. Uh, access to the control plane in the Azure side, use our box in the vSphere environment and try to not uh, abuse from the, uh, you know, admin accounts that we have provided. Uh, use as much as you can, least privilege, our back. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's easy to like, well, I know the admin password, I'll just go in really quick, but that can be, you can't track it. So if you want to maintain, you know, governance and uh, right. full our back, it's, yeah. That highly recommended. So I thank you so much for sharing your knowledge on identity and showing how to add that LDAP sec server securely uh, for authentication. And then we'll have all the links for everyone below this video, but please submit feedback, whether it's on YouTube or through that uh, landing zone. And I appreciate it so much, Javier. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.